or it's a star letter or it could be maybe a braid letter and so on. So first and foremost thing is 45 minutes time in total. Out of the 45 minutes time, in the first five minutes, you're not allowed to write anything anywhere. Then we have five minutes time to complete, uh, to read the task and 40 minutes time to complete the writing task. So you can spend even, let's say, uh, maybe five to 10 minutes time to read the case. More important thing that is for you to see, uh, you know, like uh, that <clears throat> you can have this case notes in front of you. You can have this case notes in front of you. So by the time you won't be able to see, uh, by the time you, you have to write down the letter completely. So in total 45 minutes of time, you can see the case notes. So these are different types of letter, such as referral, discharge, transfer, update, request, and so on. This is a marking guide area that you have to understand. The first of all, the first is the purpose of writing to whom we are writing this letter and for what we are writing this letter. Second is the content that is selection of the relevant case notes. Then we have organization of the information, like where to write which thing that sequence of the information is important. Then we have conciseness and clarity. Conciseness means to summarize the less important detail and clarity, uh, you know, like the connectivity of the information, the flow of the information. Then we have genre and style. Genre basically uh, the technical language that you have to have in your uh, basically, uh, you know, like uh, language component. For example, we have to be polite in our writing. For example, to whom you're writing the letter, accordingly, you have to select the relevant case notes. Then we have the language part. In the language part, it's basically sentences, tenses, and so on. We'll discuss everything in detail now. So first of all, the first thing that you have to see is the audience. Who is the recipient? Right? Right? Who is the recipient? This is the first thing that you have to see. <clears throat> Secondly, you know, like... Uh, the second thing is the reason of writing. If it's a referral letter, if it's a discharge letter, or if it's a transfer letter, accordingly, we have to select the relevant information, right? So as per the concern, as per the reason of writing, we have to design the purpose of writing. Then we have the selection of the relevant case notes. Relevant with reference to whom? With reference to recipient. If it's relevant for recipient or not, accordingly, we have to select the information and omit the irrelevant detail. It's important for you to understand that you should not write it down the irrelevant detail, right? So omit the irrelevant detail. Just write down the semi-relevant detail. It's your call. If you want to write it down or not, it's purely your call, right? To write semi-relevant information or not. Then we have organization and layout. In the layout part, an organization, no sequence the information as per the importance. Whatever the important sequence is, accordingly, you have to sequence the information. <coughs> sequence of the case notes might not be the right sequence. You have to organize as per the importance. So <coughs> layout being how to write down the address, punctuation, structure and so on, it's in the layout part. <clears throat> then we have conciseness and clarity. In conciseness and clarity, in simple word, you need to see which information is less relevant. Whatever information is less relevant, we have to summarize them down. Okay. We have to summarize them down. <clears throat> Okay. So basically, it's important for you uh, to see that which information is based, uh, less relevant, you have to summarize them down, and what is uh, more relevant, you have to expand. Right? So in case if you are writing a referral letter, 
in that referral letter, we have to summarize the first few visits if it's a progression of the disease. If it's a progression of the disease, we need to summarize that first few visits if it's related to each other, right? And in case of the Shah letter, let's say uh, the history that has been mentioned in the ward stay and the thing that has been mentioned in the rehabilitation, we need to summarize the ward and rehab history maybe. So uh, conciseness is important skill, but for the reason, the thing is you have to summarize the less important detail. That is followed by Yanre and style. In Yanre and style mean you have an ability to write a letter with reference to the recipient, the audience who is receiving the letter. According to the audience awareness, you have to select your language. So Yanre mean the selection of the right word or sim in simple word is the transformation of the case notes considering the appropriate tone and the right form of the word with reference to the audience. We should not use the abbreviation time and again, and you must be judicious in your use of abbreviation. That is followed by your basically acronyms. We are not supposed to use the acronym. Let's say two by four two, for example. And uh, we have the uh, three by seven. Let's say these are all are the acronyms, right? Try to use your own language rather than using the language of case notes. Transform the case notes into your own language, right? Anyhow, so that is followed by the language part. In the language part, we need to see that we have tenses, we have sentences, we have articles, we have parts of speech, and so on. These are the language part that you have to see in the writing task. Okay, so these are all the marking criteria that you have to see and understand. Before we can proceed further, we can write it down in this way. Let's say in the top left corner, we can write down the date. Let's say. We can write it down the recipient name, if the name is being given, then the designation, then the department, hospital address, street address, and city address, and so on. So afterward, we can write down the patient name, his age or date of birth, whatever is being given, and then doctor name. So this is a standard layout that has to be followed for the, we can say, for writing a letter. Okay, so now if you can move on to the next slide. So in organization, a general understanding of the organization. In general understanding of the organization, we have to see, the so first of all, let's say, it's your introduction part. We have to write it down. Let's say, 25 to 30 words in the introduction part, right? You just have to write it down in the introduction part 250 to 300 words. It means that your information must be concise and summarized. Okay. Then we have the section 41. It should be socioeconomic history. That should be written over here. In body paragraph number two, we have to write it down summary of the previous visits maybe. And in body paragraph number three, you know, like uh, we have to see the today's history, right? We have to see today's history. It should be in the expansion. But this is not a standard. Like you have to follow this format. This is just for your understanding. This is just for your understanding, right? So according to the information, we have to write it down, you know, like uh, according to the importance of the information, we have to write it down. Okay. Basically, uh, this is a general layout, not a standard structure. Then we can see a topic sentence. We have main idea. We have to summarize the main concern. Uh, we should write in your own language. Do not use the case notes word. That is followed by supporting sentence, such as the description of symptoms, major treatment, and so on. Okay. Is it clear to you?
So according to that, we have to write it down. Okay, just basically in the bottom most part, whenever you see the case notes, you should come to the bottom most part of the writing task. So in the bottom most part of the writing task, you should come to this part and see who is recipient. To whom we are writing this letter. Right? So we are writing this letter to the palliative care nurse, let's say. And why are you writing this letter? It's not being mentioned over here, but for further care and assistance. This is the main concern that we are writing this letter. After that, you have to see what is the main task. So if we have to see that the provisional diagnosis is terminal state of cancer, the last part, patient at the discharge plan pressure point care, four hourly, daily sponge bath, for example, pressure sore dressing, important, and tablet morphine for pain relief, right? So we may write it down, those history over here. That is followed by dietary plan and teaching. We should see semi-solid diet, mashed food item, let's say, and fluids, important. Psychological support to the patient family, important. Postural care is also important thing. And active in prayer gathering is the important point, right? So with reference to the palliative care, we just have discussed this thing with you. We'll start reading the case not from top to bottom now. Now, reading from there, you can see that which information is relevant and which is not relevant. Let's be discussed with you. So for the sake of example, let's say name, we can write it down. Yes, important, important. And you can see this date. It means that this is your today's date as per the task. In the real exam, they would mention the assumed today's date to be. They'll mention the assumption. Anyhow, so that is followed by the, uh, you can say, Social history, no retired teacher, live with her husband in Cupboard. Is it relevant or not? Can you tell me, please? If it's not relevant for the palliative care, for example, but still it will be relevant because the nurse has to arrange a home visit. It would be important. But why it's relevant? Because of the socioeconomic status of the patient is important to mention with reference to the, we can say, this point, psychological sport. With reference to the psychological sport, it's important to mention the social history. That is the retired teacher, live with her husband, right? And uh, yeah, it should. it is relevant, Dr. Maham. It is relevant. It's not partially relevant, but it is relevant. Semi-relevant cannot be, we cannot say semi-relevant. If it was just relate, not related to the palliative care, then it can be semi-relevant. But we can see there it is relevant for the psychological support. That's why we have to add on this information. Where to write? That we'll discuss further uh, in the letter. Followed by, we can see there, we have, uh, let's say, further detail. Like, say, non smoker and non drinker, important negative. No, it can be categorized as relevant or semi relevant. What do you think? Semi like non smoker, non drinker. These are important negative. Should we write it down or not? What do you think? No. No, sir. Yeah, we are not supposed to write it. They are relevant if it's was important, but we can omit as well because that's in the terminal state of cancer. Similarly, substance intake nail, same is the case that we have done with the non-smoker point. Allergies, is it relevant or not relevant? Yes, allergies are yes, always allergies relevant. Are important. Yes, yes, it is important. You're right. High relevant. Highly relevant. Yes, you're right. Okay. So moving on to the next part, that is your, you can say, the family history. We read there, mother diabetes, father hypercholesteremia. Sorry, mother diabetes and hypercholesteremia. And father hypertension. Maternal grandmother died of heart attack. Maternal grandfather diabetes. Old age not known, 
So what do you think about that part of the history? Keeping the person in mind, like the palliative care nurse, and keeping the palliative care in mind, let's say. Do you think it's relevant or not? What do you think about that? Relevant. So, okay, not relevant. not relevant. You're right. So we are not supposed to write anything over here. It's not relevant information, right? So we are not supposed to write it down, this thing. This is the second step we are doing in the selection of the marking criteria that we just discussed beforehand. Okay. Now in past medical history, we can see there, what about a childhood chicken pox and mums? Is it relevant or not? Not relevant, sir. Yeah. These are not relevant. You're right. So we are not supposed to write it down, this history. What about a diabetes? Is it relevant or not? It's relevant. No, it's not relevant. Yes, so relevant is relevant. Diabetes is relevant. Uh, as per your question, doctor. As per your question, Dr. Amy Jones, can we stay she has a family history of diabetes? Because, you know, at the moment, family history is a risk factor for diabetes. There is no significance of family history. Patient himself, uh, herself is a diabetic, right? So we are not supposed to write down, down this thing, right? Diabetes is important because for, first of all, for the pressure point care and secondly, for the diet, right? So Dr. Amy Jones, is clear to you? Amy Jones, family history should not be written. Why? Because there is no significance. Yes. And Dr. Maham, as per your point, that why diabetes is important, we can see there, as I mentioned, uh, like diabetes is important. First and foremost is for this point, pressure point care. Right? And secondly, we can see that we have a dietary instruction. So it is related for the, to the diet. Though we are not supposed to write it down that you should plan the diabetes diet because most of the students, they just self-interpret. Okay, you have to plan this, this diet. It's not the case that you should write it down. Uh, anything related to the diabetes instruction, if it's not in the case notes. Anyhow, so afterward, family history is important, depend on case to case or not. Yes, it depends upon case to case. Yeah, Dr. Hadika, mother, it depends upon case to case. It's not the case that if you, are, if you have not selected the family history, in here, we will not be selecting family history in any of that. That is not the case. Let's say if you are suspecting a diabetes mellitus, let's say diagnosis, and we have a family history of uh, diabetes, then it's case is important. Now, diabetes is relevant. The family history of diabetes is not relevant. Diabetes itself is relevant. Right? So don't get confused between the family history of diabetes and the family history of diabetes. Family history of hypertension is not relevant. Family history of diabetes is not relevant. Right? So both of the things, they are not relevant to be on a clear note. Okay. Afterward, we have this history. Let's say it's di diagnosed in 2004. For 2012, we have this history. And for 2012 or 16, we have this history. So should we write it down? I don't think so. No. Should we write it down? If it's relevant, but let's say, do you think that the palliative care nurse will, would be interested to know about the radiotherapy or mastectomy? No. No, sir. Yeah. No. So we just have to compound this thing down, like just in a one word, as the diagnosis being made, terminal state of cancer. We no need to mention that when she was diagnosed, maybe we can write it down about a diagnosis, but no need to mention about the radiotherapy. We can also mention about the remission of cancer, but the rest of the detail should not be written, right? So diagnosis of breast cancer and all these things can be written just in the terminal state of cancer. But if you want to write it down, you just write it down that she was first diagnosed in 2004. However, she was treated accordingly and there was a remission of cancer. But if you can just write down the terminal state of cancer, it would be fine. Okay. Followed by the this part. Now, everything you can see in here, important discussion and the discharge plan is important. So, let's, let's make a plan. Let's say one, two, three, and four. Can you sequence this information? 
like should i maintain the same sequence or should i have to change the sequence what do you think about that in the sequence the pressure point care we have written at the first place then dietary management maybe we have written in the second place then the psychological support we have written in the third place and uh, the religious gathering or the religious point we have written at the fourth place so what do you think about that which sequence should be maintained we should change the sequence hello Why how should we write it down the... this letter family families first about dietary management okay. okay what do you think about the pressure point care don't you think that it would be more important for the patient with reference to the palliative care sir pressure point care will be in the second paragraph sir pressure point care yes after introduction yes sir and the third paragraph should be for according to the diet schedule and all the things sir including pain relief and all this thing then we can we can maintain the same sequence right so let's for the yes, sake sir. of discussion i want you to write down this let's say we should write it down the introduction part we must have a clear uh, we can say concern just mention the palliative care clearly right and after that we can have a format to write it down the social economic history over here maybe separately or the way I, this letter has been written let's say mrs harley had developed bed sores on her right hip so translate bed sores let's say there was written as pressure point sore we just changed to bed sores then right buttock was changed to right hip and this was the problem like the patient was having bed sores and now this was the instruction the duodenum dressing on four hourly basis they were written q4h four hourly basis is recommended would be appreciated whatever and there was second instruction sponge bath on daily basis is also encouraged or we can change it in order to maintain her hygiene uh, sponge bath is encouraged and then for the tablet morphine there was instruction as per need basis we can write it down over here she must be given sorry for that she must be given tablet morphine right so in terms of a dietary intake now this is the dietary management we should mention about the diet plan right we have club the to make it more clear we have mentioned the diabetes and sea food with the diet plan separately right that is followed by uh, the next paragraph the socio economic detail let's say our diet teacher extended family just write it down a compound noun for that hence in this time of distress she along with her family needs your emotional support like baby go support was changed to emotional support that is followed by the religious lady who is a regular member of church arranging local gathering and would be also helpful to lay her suffering and then this is the conclusion part we can write it down conclusion separately let's say in view of the above or view of mrs hardless condition it would be appropriate if you could pay home visit for further assistance then at the end if you don't have the name of the recipient given we can write down faithfully right i'd like to summarize this class today we have discussed about the marking criteria we have discussed about the basic like we have 45 minutes time in total 5 minutes for reading and 40 minutes for uh, writing a case in thus that 45 minutes of time in total you will be provided with the case notes and that case note will remain with you right that is followed by the discussion of the marking criteria that what are uh, what we have in the marking criteria let's say purpose let's say selection let's say organization let's say your conciseness and clarity genre style and language right and uh, that is followed by your uh, practice of the letter task that uh, we have discussed about a selection Uh, for example selection of the case notes let's say what we can do for the selection part and then language dr bhaiza sorry i missed your so let's say i am writing this referral for mr x z who require your expertise regarding uh, regarding provision not providing sir regarding provision of palliative care services as he has been discharged today 
with the provisional diagnosis of terminal stage of cancer. Right, that's right, sir. Anyhow, so basically, we have discussed about the uh, welcome, sir. We have discussed about a general layout of the letter. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. If you have any question. Any candidates, please, if you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Word count range would be basically 180 to 200 words. Word count range would be 180 to 200 words. Right. Any other question that you want to ask, guys? Okay, so if you don't have any question, so we can say let's call it a day, inshallah. We'll meet again tomorrow at the same time with this task, right? Thank you very much. The palliative care here, ma'am. Aap ne usko provide karani na? Thank you very much for your time. ठीक है मैं आपको रिकॉर्डिंग्स लेक्चर की शेयर कर दूंगा थोड़ी टाइम तक जैसे ये रेडी होती है आई विल प्रोवाइड यू द रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ दिस लेक्चर इन ग्रुप एज सून एज इट्स रेडी वेलकम मैम थैंक यू